Hello, my name is Ralph Ellis. I'm the Marketing and Membership Director with the Ontario Lawn Bowling Association, and this is the first of three videos talking about grants and membership and how to use them to increase uh, your club's membership and improve your facilities. Today, the first of three videos, we'll talk about the New Horizons grants. The New Horizons grants have been around since the 1970s. My very first club in the 1970s received a greens mower, a verticutter, and uh, new lighting from the New Horizons program. And this still continues today and is a federal government program that offers up to $25,000 for capital projects. It does not matter if you are incorporated or unincorporated. There is no discrimination on that and both types of clubs can apply for this type of grant. So, what typically speaking do clubs tend to apply to New Horizons grants for? They typically in the past have applied for new greens equipment, repair of dishboards, lighting, appliances in the clubs, major repairs to the buildings, club bowls, club bowls equipment, scoreboards, match jacks, and also actually uh, labor for the repairs around their club. How does a program work in terms of an actual application? Each year, there opens a five week window for clubs to apply for the program. Typically speaking, that runs from the last week of May to the end of June. So last year it was May 25th to June 30th. So you need to be aware of that. When you go to the New Horizon site, it'll say that applications are closed right now. That's because they do not tell you in advance when they will start taking applications. This is a way of cutting down the number of applications. So what you need to do is to get a hold of other applications that have been made, which the Ontario Lawn Bowling Association can provide to you. Email ellis at olba.ca, that's E-L-L-I-S at olba.ca for copies of other successful applications that you can model your applications on. Then you need to be ready to decide what you need for your club. What type of equipment do you need for your club? What are your priorities? Decide that all in advance of when the application window comes around. Then when you hit the end of May, you'll be ready to start making your application. Always apply for the full 25,000. No matter what you apply for, if you're not used up your space, there are always other things we can get you to apply for and we will assist you in that process. For example, if you're applying for repairs but it's not, uh, again, enough for the full 25,000, also you're going to apply for things like new club bowls or new appliances or accessibility equipment to make it easier for people for disabilities to bowl at your club. And applying for more things, not fewer things, actually helps your application because you check off more of the boxes that interest the government people. When your uh, government person is looking at your application, what they are doing is taking your application and going off and checking through it to see that you have hit all of the areas that they are interested in. Typically speaking, uh, the key areas are social inclusion, which means that you're bringing people together and you're fighting a social isolation. Those are two key terms because any social activity that you have that brings seniors together is fighting social isolation and promoting social inclusion. The New Horizons grants are focused on seniors, but again, non-seniors at your club can benefit, but typically speaking, lawn bowling clubs have enough senior members that this is not an issue. Basically, uh, it is one of the grants that you have a very, very high success rate with, and we'll go into that a little bit later on. Other key areas are accessibility. Accessibility means, for example, uh, if you had bowling arms or ubi launchers or other items, again, for people with mobility issues so that they can play the game better and more easily, that's a big factor. Also, greens equipment that makes your greens faster or better or easier for people who are not as physically strong to play on, this is also an accessibility item. So are smaller bowls. Okay? So all of these things can fit into the application and assist you in being successful. When you're planning your New Horizons application, sit down with your board, take a look at the program objectives, take a look at the things that you can apply for. And again, we've mentioned things that you can apply for, uh, greens equipment, repair of ditch boards, lighting, appliances, major repairs, club bowls, uh, bowls equipment, accessibility equipment, any permanent fixed items. You can also apply for up to $750 for a computer, 
but only for a computer, not for a printer, not for software, not for anything else. But if your club needs a computer, you can apply for $750 for a computer. You can apply to rent equipment as long as the uh, equipment supports the purposes of your program. And one thing to make sure of, especially if you're a city-owned uh, club, is that anything that you apply for, you have permission to work on. If you're a privately owned club, typically speaking, this is not an issue. You own your property, you own the surrounding area, you can do what you want with it. However, you may need various uh, government building permits, things like that. Okay. When you are coming to um, uh, dealing with a city-owned club, then for example, at my club, we are responsible for the interior of the club, we're responsible for the appliances, but we are not responsible for the outside. And if we were to do anything on the outside of the club, we would need a letter of permission from the city. The drawback with that is that it often takes the city way too long a time to give you a permission letter. So unless you ask them months in advance, or sometimes even a year in advance, you will not get special permission to do your project. Do not apply for things that you cannot get permission for. If you, uh, for example, at my club, they asked, well, could we get new east troughs? And I said, no, because that's the city's responsibility. And if we, even if we did apply to do it, we have to get a letter from the city and they would never get back to us in time to do the application. So be aware of that. Only apply for the things that you have permission to do. So again, when you're reading the program objectives, realize that you are looking at an application that is designed to help senior people. And therefore, everything that you do, everything that you explain in the various sections, you're going to have to go back and relate to how this benefits the seniors at your club. Now, let me run through some of the exclusions for things you cannot apply for. You cannot apply for medical equipment, which means no defibrillators. That's explicitly excluded. You cannot do feasibility studies, purchase of land or buildings. You cannot renovate buildings that you do not currently occupy. You cannot do landscaping or beautification costs, so no flowers. Uh, ongoing regular expenses like greenskeeper's wages, day-to-day -day maintenance, fundraising, these are all things that you cannot apply. So you basically, you cannot apply for greenskeeper's wages. You probably can't even apply for things that would be considered normal maintenance for your green. For example, you buy sand, again, several tons of sand each year. You cannot use this to buy sand because it would be considered a regular maintenance expense. You cannot apply for seed. You cannot apply for things that be part of the normal operation of your club. What's very important when you're doing your application, you're looking at the program guidelines and you're deciding, okay, what's important for us to apply for? You need to read successful applications from other clubs. Currently, we have a database at the OLBA of successful applications and also unsuccessful applications. And when you apply, to New Horizons, and you apply in May, June, and you get your answer at the end of December or start of January of the next year. And the New Horizons people can either give you the full 25,000 or they can give you a lesser amount. So you've got that sort of time frame actually involved, so you have to plan from year to year what you want. You can apply year after year. One club I know received three New Horizons grants in a four year span. Other clubs have easily gotten grants back to back. If your grant applications are well written, typically speaking, you are looking at least at being able to get a grant uh, uh, successfully done about every second year. And this is again significant money. You're looking at $25,000 each time and that makes a real difference in your club. At my club, James Gardens, we applied to run a fitness for seniors program. And that fit in very nicely with the program objectives and we were approved uh, in uh, 2017 for our money for 2018 for a fitness for seniors program because again reporting health and welfare among seniors we applied for accessibility equipment bowling arms and ubi launchers because they trigger the accessibility angle which is very important for government and we uh, again by bringing seniors together by getting them involved in the activities of the club we were fighting social isolation which is one of the stated program objectives one of the other key program objectives, fighting senior abuse, that's not something we can easily work in. If you manage to work that in, let me know. But otherwise, that's not one of the key program objectives that you can work with. Make sure that you follow the checklist. When you look 
at the New Horizons program guides, they will give you a checklist of all the things you have to provide. Key things have to be the documentation. For example, if you are applying for repairs over $5,000, you need to have three estimates. And yes, you need to have three estimates, or you have to have a reason why you cannot have three estimates. Okay. Beyond that, if you're an incorporated club, you have to include your letters of patent, your constitution, or your bylaws. If you're not incorporated, again, put in your constitution or your bylaws to prove that you have been in, in existence. All of these things have to be in there. The New Horizons people are very nice that if you do not include some things, they may indeed get back to you and say, you haven't included this, why don't you include it? But they also can reject your application. Other things to watch are don't apply for more money than what the program allows for. Do not apply for $50,000 when the grant program only allows for twenty-five. dollars This will be automatic disqualification. So, you can add money from your club beyond the $25,000 to complete the project, but you cannot ask for more than $25,000. You have to meet the deadlines. There, is no, there are no second chances. Thou shalt get the application in. Make sure if you're mailing it in, that you're sending it in via courier where you have proof that has been received. And also make sure that you have included all the documentation inside the application. Curious enough, with New Horizons, you don't have to include, include a financial statement. Other ones like the Provincial Seniors Community uh, a Program Grant, you do have to include that, but not with New Horizons. You also don't have to have a detailed budget. Because they can give you less money than the full amount, you don't necessarily have to budget out each and every item. If you're buying big ticket items, you kind of want to specify, roughly speaking, what they would cost, but you can keep that, again, fairly general. You also want to include a certain number of small items. I tend to recommend uh, uh, things like bowling bags or other small bowling items included in your application so that when you have leftover money, that you can use up those money on those smaller items. Because any money that you don't use will go back to the government. Okay. Um, you can ask the grants people for help. Before, people, before the grants application people start taking applications, you can call them and say, look, I want to apply for this, does this work? And you can walk through it and, again, uh, deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. They will be relatively responsive. They are not interested in you not getting the grant, they're interested in helping you get the grant. Once the application process begins, then actually they may be more reluctant to give you an advantage versus other people by giving you extended detail information. So, if you want to ask questions, ask early. Also, if you need to get information, you can contact either myself, Ralph Ellis, at ellis at oba.ca, or our current grants director, Philip Francis, francis at oba.ca, if you want help with your application, or if you want someone to read over your application and take a look at it and suggest changes. Decide what your priorities are. When you put together your group who's going to consider what you're going to apply for, make sure that everybody has read the program guidelines. And there are a lot of program guidelines. There, you know, we're looking at um, uh, uh, documentation that runs up to like about 50 pages by the time you're through. So anybody who's going to have a serious input in terms of what you apply for has to have read this document. Put together a small committee, have your grant writer, your lead grant writer in charge, and you can have other people on the committee as a second set of eyes. You want people, one, who are detail focused, who will look to make sure that you have hit all of the things that you have to do for this application. You want ones who will be able to write reasonably eloquently about what you want to, uh, to do with the grant and how it fits the program objectives. And each and every section of the grant application, you will return and discuss how, how that what you're mentioning in that session feeds into the grant uh, uh, program guidelines. This is absolutely critical. I joke about clubs that get turned down right, like Ernest Hemingway, short to the point and very uh, uh, limited, and clubs that are approved write more like Charles Dickens, where you repeat yourself, you discuss the same point over and over again, you keep on returning, returning the key program objectives, and it's, it's a little more flowery, it's a little more descriptive. That type of writing style helps you with the grant 
a very limited writing style where you're very direct and to the point and you do not, again, return to emphasize the points in each section that costs you points. Make sure that you do not owe any money to the federal government. This is a requirement for the program and it means that if you are an incorporated club, you want to have filed your taxes. As a club, the odds that you will actually be paying taxes, very, very small. Okay? But it is important to file the short, like T2 short form each year if you are an incorporated club so that the government knows that you do not owe any money to them and you are not actually, again, in a taxable situation. This is important actually just to do for your regular governance and you need to pursue that. Unincorporated clubs, it's a little more sketchy. Um, typically speaking, the government is not going after you. In theory, you should be applying, uh, again, doing your taxes each year as an unincorporated club, but it's less critical than with an incorporated club. Also with an incorporated club, you have to make sure with the provincial government that you are filing your, uh, again, your list of officers and directors. And if you do not do that each year, eventually your corporate designation can be revoked. So make sure you have your house in order when you're doing your applications. Now, if you're not sure about some of these things, you still can do your application and then catch up on some of this stuff. But again, you have also uh, potentially triggered them being interested in you if they look and say, okay, let's see if they owe us any money. And they go back and they see you haven't filed any taxes for 10 years. So make sure you have your house in order. When you're looking at the long-term interests of your club, you're going to work through a rotation of your different areas and needs. For example, at my club, in the first year, we did our Fitness for Seniors program, which basically were a whole series of items that were designed to help membership growth and help make the game easier to play at my club, James Gardens. In subsequent years, the next year, we will probably apply to replace all of the 20-year-old appliances that happen to be in our clubhouse. The year after that, we will probably go again for a different set of equipment or we may actually go for repairs. Repairs are probably the hardest thing to apply for because you have to justify them within the program. You have to make sure that you have all of the estimates and you have to uh, really make sure that you've got a credible argument for how this will make your, uh, the lives of your seniors better. So I found that for the clubs that applied for various things, applying for equipment, was relatively easy, applying for repairs was more difficult. You may want to wait to apply for repairs until you have a little more experience with the grant, get your first applications in, see how it works, get your people uh, some experience in applying. Who should write your grant application? I wrote the grant application for James Gardens largely because as a graduate student, I used to write scholarship applications. And that's a very similar process. You take what you, what you want to do and you fit it in with what the person who's providing the scholarship is interested in. And that's the same thing here. Everywhere along the way, you are saying to your, uh, uh, the government, okay, here's what I want to do, and here's how it fits in with the government objectives. That's critical. When you're looking at uh, someone who could do this potentially, um, aside from myself because I'm writing with a scholarship uh, experience, you might look at someone who has worked in government. If you have a former government employee who's used to dealing with forms and the government and how they look at things, that's very useful. You can also take a look at someone, for example, who has been a teacher and who's going to be, again, relatively eloquent, relatively good with words and used to dealing with government forms. But basically, you want a person who, one, will put in the work to do the detailed reading of the program objectives the detailed list of what you have to do and the deadlines and all the small little aspects that are part of the program and then go back and write it. If you only have one person who can do this, that's fine. As long as they get approval from your board and everything, that's okay. If you have a small committee, that can be useful to have a second set of eyes to go back and go in and say, okay, you've done this, but you haven't done this. That's very useful. But the people who are on the committee must read the documentation. That's critical. If you have people giving you input who have not read the documentation, who do not know what the government requires, this will not help you. And it can actually force you to uh, disqualify yourself as you go along because you ask for something that you can't possibly have. Okay. For example, if you applied for $10,000 of computer equipment, you would not get it. 
because the program doesn't allow for that. You have to read the details, and there are a lot of details. The OLBA has the program guidelines. You can download them from the government, but if you contact us, I will send you a series of forms talking about, uh, again, the program guidelines. I will show you up to about uh, nine or ten different applications in different areas, ones that applied for things that are related to membership, ones that are applied to, for repairs, ones that are applied for new greens equipment, and let's face it, if you have greens equipment that is 10 to 15 years old, you probably want to replace it. And keep in mind that if you, let's say, get a new mower that costs about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you can sell your old mower. You can possibly sell it to golf greens, you can sell it potentially to other clubs, things like that. So the material that you replace you can sell. The material that you buy, of course, you cannot. So these are all things that, that matter. For example, if you go and replace all of your you know, old black club bowls with small colored bowls, you can go and sell all of your old bowls that are all chipped up and whatever else, whatever you want, and then use that money for other purposes in your club. This is all acceptable. But again, you have to be aware of this again by reading the program guidelines and taking the time to go over what are the priorities for your club? The OLBA, the Ontario Lawn Mowing Association, can get you help. But in order to get you help, you have to get to us in time. If you come to us two days before the deadline and say, is my application okay? Maybe you'll get a response, maybe you won't. If you contact us a couple of weeks beforehand, then we've got a shot. But your best bet is actually to have a meeting with us sometime before even the application program uh, period opens up. For the last four months, I've been traveling to clubs, going around, teaching them how to apply for grants. The time to do that is in the winter, not just before the grant application time period. So contact the Ontario Lawn Bowling Association for a grants and membership workshop, and we will come to you. We will travel across the province to come to you to help you. When you write your application, we will go back and we will assist you with that process. If you are turned down, we will go back with you, go over your application and let you know how you can improve it. The New Horizons people will also go over your application with you in detail to say, okay, this is what you needed to do better. This is what's missing. And sometimes actually it's very silly things. For example, Clubs don't get three estimates for a project over $5,000. That will cost you. They don't describe how what they're doing fits into the program guidelines. For example, I have clubs apply for things that are definitely accessibility equipment, but they come to section 48, which talks about that, and they don't enter anything in that section for accessibility. That costs you. And again, it's providing the detail of what they need. They have their checklist, make sure that everything goes in. Make sure you've provided your letters patent or your constitution or your bylaws. Make sure that you've provided, um, again, a listing of the type of equipment that you plan to get. But again, you don't have to do that in detail. Sometimes you don't even have to get estimates for it. Again, as long as not, if you're buying one large item, like a $15,000 mower, well then maybe actually you might want to provide a couple of different quotes but it is not the same thing as when you do applications for repairs where you have to have three estimates over $5,000 and one estimate below $5,000. So, take a look at what your club needs, plan out a strategy over several years. You're gonna apply for one set of things one year, another set another year, and you work your way through it. I personally encourage clubs to apply for things that help develop your membership. You can apply for things in your club, again, like club bowls, like ubi launchers, like bowling arms, that all make your club uh, uh, easier to play at for people who are seniors. And you can use these as continuous points to emphasize in your program. And there are things that you can add to even applications where you're applying for larger other items. Let's say you're applying for appliances. You can also apply for membership items. It does not hurt you to apply for more. It hurts you to apply for less. So now, Summing up, read the program guidelines, and after you've read them, read them again. Then you go back and get successful applications from the Ontario Lawn Bowling Association so you can see what you need to include. 
once you have that process done, talk to us. Have a meeting with us. We can go over what you're interested in and the strategies for how to approach it and make sure that you get a grant of $25,000. Now, there are going to be two more videos in the series. One is a video for how to apply for the Seniors Community Grant Program, which is for non-capital items. And then there'll be a third video on how to turn all of this money into members. Thank you for watching. My name is Ralph Ellis, and if you need help with your grants, contact the OLBA and contact me, ellis at olba.ca, E-L-L-I-S at olba.ca. Thank you.